Right, my name's Mr Muddles Man, and someone I know told me that I ought to make a model and make a video of it and put it on the YouTube for everybody to watch. Well, I took that advice and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of these squig hoppers and I'm going to take it out of the box and I'm going to stick it together and I'm going to make it and I'm going to film it with the camera. And I'm going to put it on the YouTube. Right. Well, this is the bloke. This is the little twat that sits on the top. And what I've done, I've stuck it together and I've cut the hand off and I've stuck a little bit of brass rod up. There it is there. Um, that's so I can hold it and so I can stick it to the squig later on. Uh, and also what I've done, I've shaved the edge of the blade down a bit just there, like when I'm pointing up there. That makes it a little bit sharper. Um, and there's a squig thing, and I've painted the inside of the mouth before I stuck it together in case I can't get a brush down it. And I've and I've drilled a hole in it, and that, there, there we go, just there. Um, and that's where I'm going to put the brass rod down, just there. Um, and, I, and, I, and I've put loads of mini putt in it um, to uh, to make to fill in the holes and things. And I've put some texture all around the front of the chin, um, like little kind of spots and roughness all around the front of the chin just there because I didn't like the smooth plastic. I thought it was all too smooth and, and I wanted to make it a little bit more rougher. Um, so I did that with Millie Putt. Now, those people at Games Workshop, they're into their gender binary, non-fluid, non-binary, or whatever, I don't know what it's called, I really don't know. And they don't have any bits on their squigs, look, see, look at the sprues, they've got no bits on them. So, um, anyway, see, my squig, he identifies as male, and he's a fully intact male, that's what he identifies as. So what I had to do is I had to make him a penis and testicle glands there out of millipot and green stuff so he can be a proper boy squig now. And I made him a bum hole there because, well, he's going to want to have a dump at some point, isn't he? And the twat on top, I primer painted it in black primer paint and I gave him an overspray of white paint over the top because that's what everyone else does these days. I thought, well, I'll do it myself as well. Um... And I did the same with the squiggy, um, so it's got like uh, um, a, like an overspray on top of like light paint, and um, I wanted his belly to be very pale underneath as well. So you got like a zenithal highlight there, and a genital highlight there. And there's a load of oil paints that I got out of my box. That I might not use all of them, I won't use all of them, I know that now. That's Indian red and there's all kinds of, well, there's, there's bright red and there's flesh tint and there's brown matter with a resilin and there's cadmium red and there's vermilion hue and there's all kinds of colours and I don't use all of them. And I used a flesh tint but it had been in the tube a long time and it had gone a little bit old and stodgy so I thinned it down a bit with white spirit but I used too much white spirit and it's gone a little bit thin so it's a bit too thin so I have to kind of use some other thicker stuff and I use cadmium red there and you can see I just put a, put it on sort of a bit, bit haphazard really sort of slap it on a bit any old how I'm not really too bothered about how I put it on and spread it about because I'm going to just spread it about later on because because it's really good oil paint because it um, it takes a long time to dry and you can just spread it about a bit. You can see I'm kind of just spreading it about a bit there. And it's fun to use because you don't have to worry about where you're putting it really. You can just like push it about. Tiny little bits go a long way with oil paints you see. Same on the other side. Up the tail. And like just sort of spread it out really thinly. The thinner you, the thinner you spread it, the like um, the the more of the under under priming paint will show through. And that's like the pale belly I was telling you about earlier. I want to have a very pale belly. Yeah, tickle his bum hole. And you can put light colours next to dark colours, and you can blend them together very easily. Oh, it's gone very blurry there, isn't it? That's better. Yeah. 
and you push it around like that and you get nice transitions. Transition, that's uh, that's a word of the moment, isn't it? Everybody's transitioning, apparently. I'm not. Just blending colours together. This is what I like about oil paints, because you can just have a little bit of fun with them, push them around. You've got all the time in the world. Well, not all the time in the world, that's a lie. But you've got a lot of time. And you can mix the colours together on the figure. You don't have to use a palette to mix them together. You, you, you can do it on the, on the figure. And I put a darker colour. I think that's Indian red there on the legs. So I want the legs to be a little bit darker. Put it on and just push it around a bit and you can blend it into the top part of the legs a little bit if you want to. Well, it's a good idea to do that, really. Indian red more of a brown than a red. It's a sort of reddish brown. And the other leg. He's got two legs to do them both. Spread it out nice and thinly. And highlight the back as well. I'm going from one colour to another. I don't really know why I'm doing that because the little twat sits on top and you can't really see much of it when it's all finished. But I'm highlighting the uh, the forms of the, the three dimensional forms of the leg there, the sort of squiggy thigh muscles. And there's his knee. Little folds of squiggy flesh and things. Just start to make it look a little bit more three dimensional. And some folds of squiggy flesh around the squiggy mouth. And the paint's still quite wet underneath, but I'm using very tiny little amounts of paint. Oh, there's a big bit there. I'll take care of that in a moment. See, there you go. That took care of it. I'm starting to highlight parts of the feet. Those sort of pad things make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. Start to bring out some contrast. Start to make them look a little bit more three-dimensional from a distance, like. Oh, it's gone blurry. That's the problem though, I'll paint. Sometimes it makes the figures go blurry. But you blend them away and, and it'll soon pop back into focus. There you go, back in focus. Now, I didn't know what colour to do the squiggy scrotum sack. Because I've never seen a real one in re in real life, so what I did is I had a look at my own one, and I and I used that as a guide. So I mixed up this colour, and, and you'll see later on I sort of added a sort of bluey grey to it as well, um, and it matches matches the colour quite well, um, and I'm quite happy with the, the end result. It looks it's quite it's quite a, it's quite a good likeness, I think. But um, if you haven't got your own one to look at, you could ask your father or, or, or possibly a favourite uncle if he'll show you his one. And, and, um, and you could use that for reference. Yeah, that's looking much more realistic now. Right, that's brown in, And I'm using that to put some shadow under his lip. It's quite a dark colour. So small amounts just to bring a bit of a shadow in there. Gently brush it out with a brush. Blend it in. And here a few more darker creases under his chin. Gently blend them in. You see, I didn't want my squiggy to be too sort of orange all, the, all over. I didn't want him to be too too cartoony. 
Well, does that make does that word is that a real word? I don't I think it was made a word up, didn't I? Yeah, I'm adding more highlights to the top there. I don't, I don't really need to do that. I don't know why I'm doing it. Because that little thing's going to be sitting on top of there. You're not really going to see it. But anyway, you can kind of see what effect it has. Just, uh, just lightening up the top. Right. What's happened there? It, it's dried off a little bit. And I think I gave it a little bit of an overspray with um, varnish. And I thinned down some burnt umber paint with white spirit. It's very thin. You can see how thin it is there. It's very thin, actually. Look, it's like a wash. And I'm going to slap it all over. And what this does, it um, it makes it like browner, obviously, because it's like brown paint. Um, and it, um, well, what it does, it, it glazes everywhere and it ties colours together and it kind of sort of dulls it down a bit. Um, but but you can still see through it because it's well it's a glaze. Um, well you know what a glaze is, don't you? And what this does, it ties everything together. It ties all the colours together. It sort of harmonises things. This very thin paint does. This very thin oil paint, and it's applied over a very thin coat of varnish to protect the. Oil paint underneath, because otherwise it might just wash off, you see. So I'm going to slap it all over everywhere. Very thin, you can see how thin it is, it's very thin. And there it is all over the squig. Now I'm going to use a different kind of umber. This one's raw umber. There it is, I told you. But I'm not going to thin this one down. I'm just going to pick it up on the brush and I'm going to do the bottom parts of the legs, the feet really. Little bit on the brush. And I'm just going to put it quite liberally on the bottom part of the feet and the front part of the feet. Left foot, right foot, front and back. Spread it around, remove most of the excess. Now use a makeup sponge and I'm going to get rid of a lot of the um, the, the glaze and the, uh, the stuff off the feet but I'm going to just dab it off. I'm not going to wipe it off because I don't want to make it go streaky. Just dab it off gently. The, the sponge picks up quite a lot of the stuff if you just dab it off. You can see it's just dab, dab, dab. If you were to wipe it off, you might get streaks. And I don't really like the look of that, so I just like dab it off. Dab, dab, dab. Dab it off. And what's left is a very, 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 very thin amount of paint left on it. And I just go round and round and round. Round and round, squiggy. Dabbing it off. Dab, dab, dab. It all comes off. Now what I've got here is a brush that's very lightly moistened with with white spirit and I'm taking off very few points of paint. You'll see that it's just a very few lines of paint here and there. And this is like highlighting by removing paint. And you can see it very clearly there, round, round his bottom hole. And round his swingers. Any bits that you want to, to stand out and sort of re-highlight, you can re-highlight them just by removing the paint, remove the glaze, all these spotty bits or whatever. Quite an effective way of re-establishing highlights. Now the glaze has dried off really well, um, and now I'm going to go in with. Well, I might not. I think I only use one of those colours actually. 
I'm, I'm going to add a few more little highlights here and there. I think I used the unbleached tenanium. Yeah, there it is, the unbleached tenanium. And I just added a few highlights here and there. And the spotty bit there. And a few of these sort of acne bits around his chin. I, I, don't, I don't know if squigs get acne, do you? But anyway, it was like acne bits. So I'm, I'm pretending they're acne. I'm painting them all this unbleached stuff to make them look, look a bit more spotty. And a few little highlights going down the tail. And a few tiny highlights here and there. Be sparing though, you don't want it to be all highlight, do you? And his nutsack. And these bits on the feet, um, these little pad bits. I don't know what they're made of, I've never seen a real squig's feet. But I sort of imagine that they're kind of like really rough skin. Where he's been running through the undergrowth, chasing down enemies, trampling them underfoot, or roughening up his feet like that. Get them lots of texture by stippling the paint on. And there it is. And then I put some varnish on it, and I don't know if I did the right thing doing that. I, th I think I should have left it a little bit shiny. I think I prefer that look. Oh well, you live and learn, don't you? And then I put, the, put some stuff on the base. I put like plant stuff and rubbish and stuff on it. And uh, I painted his teeth and his lips and his gums and that and his little eyes. Um, and there it is, ready to put the little twat on top and paint him. So I'm going to paint the little twat on top and I'm going to use acrylics paints. Right, I took some of that. I don't know the name of that at all. I added some of this. Now, I do like the name of that. I used to drink pints of snake bite when I was younger. I put it in to make it slightly yucky, a slightly yuckier silver. And I applied thin coats all over the sort of stabby blade he's got there. So a couple of thin coats all over the stabby blade. Nice even coverage. There's thin coats all over it. Right, now I'm going to use this wild wood paint. And I'm going to thin it down with water. And I'm going to apply it sparingly here and there on the blade. And it's just to make it look even more manky. So it's like really a really horrible manky blade. And I'm going to put it on, I'm just going to like feather it out. And feather it in. Push it around. Um, I wanted to make it look like it's a horrible, dirty, old, old, dirty blade. Like he doesn't take any care of it. And then I'm going to use the other silver metal to sort of hi well, to highlight a few things on it on the blade, like the edges, to, to sort of like um, where he might have. The, the metal might be a little bit more polished where he's been slashing and cutting and stabbing things. Now I'm going to use this Julie Man flesh to paint the mouth and the lips. Just a couple of coats of it because it's a nice red colour. And I'm going to use this colour, thinned down nice and thinly with water. 
And you can see there, I'm just painting it very thinly over his feet and his hands and his head and his everything else. And that black and white priming paint shines through it and, and helps with the highlighting and shading. So I don't have to think too hard about where the highlights and shadings could go. Very thin colts. Slowly building up opacity. That colour and that colour. Put them together half and half to start highlighting things like the knuckles and other things, other bits as well. Good to whiz through this because it's quite dull really, isn't it? There's the nose. And the chin. Then that colour on its own. Start to highlight all small areas. You know the principle, don't you? You know how to highlight things. Little bit here, little bit there. Smaller areas. Making it lighter. Round and round we go. And then those two colours put together, adding the highest little bits on the side of the nose. The tippy tip of the knuckle. Oh, I say. Oh, my titties, this is boring. Right, and that's how he looks when he's all painted up. I've done his teeth as well. And his little nails on his feet. And the end of his stabby stick thing. Nasty looking thing, isn't he? Ah, uh, it's back to snake bite. My favourite drink. And I don't know what that thing is, it's like a waistcoat thing, I don't know what it is. But I thinned, I thinned the snake bite down. And I'm going to put a couple of coats on it there, it's a lovely colour isn't it? I'm going to apply it all over that sort of waistcoat thing. And then I'm going to use this, it's this Talan sand, and I'm going to thin that down, and I'm going to use that to start highlighting. Then I'm going to use Talan Sand and Dawn Yellow. That's not how you spell Dawn, by the way. I I spelt that wrong. And I'm going to do the very edges, and it makes it look a little bit more worn out and rough around the edges. Makes it look like it's all been sort of all tatty and torn around the edges, like leather is all kind of rough. Rough and tatty leather. Doing all the edges and those spiky bits. Mm. 
Now I'm applying a glaze, another glaze of thin down snake bite leather. Thin down with water again. And what this does is just makes a little bit sort of warmer and a bit richer. It makes quite a difference actually doing this. I like I like doing this bit. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just using black paint to black line all the bits underneath this waistcoat thing. And this is a very important stage to do, this is. It makes it it makes it look very three-dimensional. And if there's one thing you take from this video, it should be this. It's black lines matter. Right. I take that colour there, that one, that one there, and that one, that one there, that, 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 yeah, that one, and that one, and I mixed them all together, and I made a yucky grey colour like that, and I thinned it right down, and I applied several very thin coats all around him. And the reason I did that was so that, again, the priming paint would show through the thin layers. And I just built up lots of very thin layers, letting the priming paint do all the hard work of showing me where the shading and highlighting would be. And I just went round and round and round slowly building up layers of opacity. And where I wanted to be a bit darker, I just put another layer of thin paint. And then I used Dawn Yellow and I mixed that into the grey I'd previously mixed. And I used black just on its own. And I used them to do the shading and highlighting. Just adding a little bit more Dawn Yellow successively. And you can see there I've already painted in some black lines for the seams. Just straight black lines. There we go, there. And there, and there, and there. And it could do with highlighting around the edge of the face. I'm going to do that later. And there's some more dawn yellow added into the grey. And I'm highlighting the edge of the, the bottom of the, his coat thing to make it look more raggedy. Tiny little amounts, you don't need a lot. I like the edge of that hole. Tiny, tiny little bits of highlight. And there I'm just highlighting the edge of the seam. Just go alongside the, the black line. And it makes it look like it's a stitched seam.
And there, round the, round the edge of his face. Forms a frame around his face, you see. Draws attention to how ugly he is. Ooh, he is ugly. You see, I've gone down all those black lines that are the seams with, with highlight paint to make them look three-dimensional seams and I've painted a few little slashes on it as well like, like to make it look like it's all damaged and rackety round his, round his hood and I think that'll do really just a quick paint job Oh, he's scary, I don't like him Let's stick him on Squiggy and there he is spinning round and round um, well, uh, that was fun. I enjoyed making this. I, that was good. That was a good laugh. That one. no, it wasn't. It wasn't a laugh at all. It was, it was quite dull. But um, but thank you for watching. Um, I'm supposed to say things now like um, thanks for watching and please subscribe and don't go back to a firework once it's been lit. Um, and give us a thumbs up and uh, all things like that. Uh, maybe I'll do another video. Who knows? Um, well, bye.